move forward then. So welcome everybody to the Technical Steering Committee for Hyperledger. Everybody's welcome to attend this meeting and be respectful of the other participants here. If you have any questions on what that looks like, you can always check out the uh, Code of Conduct that we have linked in a variety of places, including the <coughs> agenda. Uh, we've got some work in flight that there's no report out today, including what you see there for the CICD. Um, and then one thing that didn't make it onto the list that I'm going to drop into the uh, chat forum on chat.hyperledger.org is uh, an earlier proposal for some uh, uh, cross language support, spoken language. Uh, and it would be helpful if each of the projects took a look at that report and, or took a look at that proposal and um, provided some feedback on how that uh, would work or not work with their particular project at Hyperledger. And with that, I think we can go right into the quarterly reports. Um, if I could, uh, for, yeah. the, for the CICD committee, we had a fairly good turnout uh, last week. The next meeting is tomorrow. We would, of course, like more projects to be represented. So um, if you're doing CICD, please do join the meetings because we, we want your input on the future of kind of where this is going. Thanks. Okay. All right, so we had the uh, Sawtooth update go in, uh, I think, yesterday. So I don't know if it has been widely read yet. Somebody have the link for that handy? I'll post it in, Dan. Thanks. It looks like it's been reviewed, but all but uh, two of the TSE members. <laughs> oh, which one was this? Sawtooth. Oh, I had I yeah, I looked at it on the plane last night, but I wasn't logged in, so um yeah. Thanks. Okay, great. And then um thanks for pasting that link, but that's to uh PR. Oh, there we go. Yep, I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> but we would like more eyes on that on that pull request, so um, all right, so uh, any, any questions or comments on this update? Andrea, as long I as have, you... Uh, I have one okay. question, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, I saw uh, the software has supported the uh, PBFD. So uh, how about the, the performance on the uh, large scalability? So on a large network, what kind of performance characteristics is that showing? Yeah, I, I think it's a native PBFT implementation, right? Yeah, it's uh, Rust-based, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep, it is Rust-based. You, you get any so performance I, I, number? Yeah, I think the question is, how, good does, how well does it run if you're running on large networks? Where, at what level have you tested it? Um, so we've been running some LR network tests with um, 10 nodes, I believe. Um, I don't know what the, we're able to do a lot more than what Poet can do currently with um, the settings, but I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. Um, and are you testing, have you tested failover and um, adding removing nodes uh, yep what's the level yeah. okay good yeah we have we have shut down nodes and restarted them um, and we've had some nodes uh, due to some hardware issues uh, die out on their own and we were able to bring them back okay thanks for the information there's also some RFCs that we have around consens around PBFT consensus that might be interesting for the community to look at too. One that comes to mind for the question about uh, leader election is a, a forced periodic leader election. And so that might be uh, interesting for people. And, and once that gets implemented, that would of course ensure that uh, that feature is constantly under test. Yep, and all of those um, RFCs are already implemented within the code base. Okay. 
Okay. Um, Andy, any, anything else that you would like to highlight on this? Um, we uh, are, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say that we are working towards um, a 1.2 release, hopefully happening uh, within the next couple months. Um, as a part of that, the PBFT will be released as a 1.0 as well. Um, also, we have some new mobile SDKs. Um, so you can write Satya applications in Swift and uh, and so Java, so for Android. I had a question on the diversity of contributors. Um, you talk about there being 13 different domains. Is that like, do you mean 13 different companies, if you will, or? So I, I pull the stats for that. And what I do is I parse out the sign offs and then I, I uh, grab the domains off the email signatures for that. So there's 13 different domains that are contributing. I've been trying to go in and scrub the numbers this month to see if there's um, any sort of overlap. Okay, because it says there were 41 committers and 13 different domains, so all right. Just yeah, checking. so you would expect several committers to be from the same companies. Right, yeah, I just was. Yeah, so I would read that as a high water mark or, a, or an upper bound on the uh, potential companies that are contributing. Okay. Yeah, actual numbers probably something a little bit less than that. Probably people using their Gmail account and stuff as well. All right, yeah. cool. Thank you. Yeah. There's now quite a few repositories, so the script does a lot of work for me that I don't want to do by hand. Any thoughts on uh, making that available to everyone for all the projects? Uh, sure, sure. Um, when I suggested that before, uh, several months back, Tracy showed me a script that she had that she was using that was a lot better than mine. Oh, okay. But uh, I've put mine up as a gist somewhere so I could, uh, I could find that link again. Okay, well, I mean, you know, pull requests for Tracy's scripts are, are you know, also accepted, right? They're in the uh, Hyperledger Labs repo somewhere. I can't remember, what, what does she use? Because I use Git DM. She, she used uh, Git and Bash scripts. Oh, okay. And like unique, you know, UNIQ and mail merge and all of that stuff. She used yeah. Unix. So Git DM is like that, but it's written in Python and I hate Python. <laughs> <laughs> the, like, the Rust bindings to libgit2 are pretty amazing, but you know, Rust, Rust is a pretty heavy lift for something like this. Hey, hey Rye, this is James. I remember that conversation we had on, on Rocket Chat about running Tracy scripts and you needed pretty high level permissions across the repos. and. Yeah. You know, even even with like the publicly visible information, it was I wasn't able to um, to exact that stuff other than against repos where I had, um, you know, contributor rights. Shouldn't well, I don't know what her scripts are doing. Her her, her scripts just work against the public uh, Git. Yeah, repo. I was going to say yeah, it was it was an API token thing. It was it was something it was something weird. Maybe she's changed them since then, or or maybe they somebody else. I can I can answer this. That was a bug. There was a mistyped URL in there. And so it was trying to use admin access to access ah. the Hyperledger account on GitHub because the full URL didn't resolve. Oh. I pushed a PR to Rye about three weeks ago or something to fix it. I don't know if it's landed yet. I can check on it. But yeah, there was one that was mis misspelled. It was like the healthcare working group, but it was spelled Heathcare or something like that. Yeah, yeah but I mean, basically, um, yeah, I mean, it, all that stuff is in the Git log, so. Yeah, I, I was running those scripts unprivileged. That's how I found it. Yeah. I drop all my privileges when I run these things that are supposed to be for you know public consumption. Yeah, I, I what, like you run the, um, I don't know, the, is Salona on? I, but uh, what, what's the status on getting sort of, you know, the vanity metrics and stuff up? I know everybody hates them. I know Brian hates them, but everybody asks. <laughs> And I think it'd be useful to sort of make it public to sort of encourage. I see that Salona's on, but she's been uh, out this week. Uh, okay. We are working with the Community Bridge team to bring those yeah, uh, metrics that's in. that's what I heard. Right. <clears throat> so that's... Hi. For... <laughs> Sorry, it took a little while for me to find my mute button. Um, it sounds like somebody has a cold. Yeah, I think it was a little worse than that, but I'm doing a lot better now. Uh, and I can so better. without pain. 
Um, so yeah, um, right now we're working internally with LF to try to get to where we would like to be in regards to gathering those metrics. We haven't gotten there yet. Um, Rye and Dave have, and obviously Tracy have been doing clever things behind the scenes to try to get there. We're also, um, that's one of the reasons also, Chris, for wanting to do the, the Swano, I think we lost you. Well, that virus took a sudden turn for the worse. Mm. Am I, am yeah. I on? Sorry. Yep. Yeah. I dropped out for a second. Um, and so we, we, Rye, Dave, and um, previously Tracy were working on some internal scripts, but we're trying to get some of that stuff a little bit more productionalized. Um, and we are looking at trying to gather other numbers um, beyond just off of GitHub but also Confluence, Jira, and chat. So it's just slow progress. Okay. Um, always a good idea to have a reason for data first. So we, we don't need to discuss it more now, but just um, dumping a bunch of, of numbers. Isn't oh. I, I need all those numbers. My team doesn't know how well we're doing. Our team doesn't know the status of the different projects very well, unless we do know how contributions are going and how all of that is working. So um, they're very much so needed by our team. It's just, we've got to work within a lot of different varied constraints. Okay. So we right. kind of well, covered the fabric uh, last week, but were there any questions? Yeah, so Chris gave us a quick download uh, last week. And it looks like everyone's already reviewed it. Yeah, there's only a couple of um, questions I tried to answer. Uh, the ones that had been, um, I don't know. Did everybody, so, so Mark, to your point on Kube and so far that's not quite in alpha, but we hope to get it into a 2.0. <clears throat> And then uh, uh, Nathan, if you're on, um, in, in regards to URSA integration, um, that's not currently planned. Um, you know, maybe we can get an update on how mature that is and so forth uh, and figure out where it fits um, and when, you know, is the right time. And then as far as ID Mix, ID Mix is in there, um, has been since 1.2, we finished, uh, a lot of the work in 1.3 and I think in 1.4 we added the revocation piece, which was sort of the last remaining uh, support item. And uh, so that's in there. Um, and what, in what way is that integrated in? Is that- What do you mean? In what way is it integrated? Code, it's, it's in the, like the SDK support or that's- Yeah, it, it's in, it's in the, um, it, it's, it's in the um, Java and JavaScript SDKs. Don't, no, if it's in the go one, I'd have to ask Troy. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, Balwan, maybe you know if it's in Python, but. Um, Not yet. In terms of um, the supported SDKs of Java and Node, um, it's, uh, it's in there. I think Java actually might have been in 1.4 as well, but uh, the Node was uh, in 1.3. 1 and um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I mean, the, the support is there, right? Um, it can be used. Uh, I, I'd have to go double check. It's been a while. I believe we have an example, you know, tutorial. Okay. Well, Chris, Chris about the ID mix, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, in the documentation, they are mentioned that there's still some uh, limitation for the ID mix, right? I remember uh, one ma a major one, it, uh, it uh, limited the uh, organization number in the network. So do you know, is there any plan to improve that? Oh, you mean to add in sort of random people, kind of support people that are not in part of the, in, in the consortium? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that and, I, and other limitations. I'd have to research that. I don't know the answer. Okay. I think if you ask on Fabric Crypto, they could tell you. Any further questions? Cool. 
All right, thanks, Chris. On to the architecture work group update. I think this was Ron. I don't see. Is Ron on this morning? I, yeah, I can Ram's I can answer most of the questions if it's Ram's the one that that sent it in Ram's stand and I put it together so okay I didn't see any questions on it and it's basically the there are two parts of the message the first is that we're continuing to make progress um, the second is um, and this is I just want to make sure that everybody sees in the issues section um, we are writing about your platforms for both the system identity <laughs> privacy and confidentiality. Um, we are writing based on our best knowledge. We have reached out to participants and contributors to each of the platforms. Um, if you don't get back to us, you're stuck with what we write. So that that's the nasty part of it. The positive part of it is please, we need your help in clarifying some things. So um, if each of the platforms could make sure that they reach out to Ron, Stan or myself, um, uh, we'll point you to the documents and the sections that we've been writing up for it. So, hey folks, uh, Sam here. Looks like I was using the privacy and confidentiality feature and couldn't find myself on here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for covering that, Nick. Yep, that pretty much um, was it. Okay, well, uh, I think with that, a uh, pointer to next updates coming from the identity work group, Iroha, and uh, I guess that's the, the two that are most, uh, <clears throat> that are the soonest on our list here. We don't have any further agenda items, so I'll give just a, a minute for uh, TSC members that wanted to raise something but didn't get a chance to get that on the the list. But in general, it's best if if we do have agenda items, we get them up there first so that people have an opportunity to prepare and we have uh, constructive use of our time. Do we need to discuss the backlogs? I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, today Salona is ill and that's postponed project readiness. I just heard from Dave that uh, he's not ready to yeah. present today. And uh, Mark and I still need to work on the overall engagement. So I, I don't. Sorry, Ray, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just gonna apologize to the TSC for not being ready with the project readiness stuff. I, my my daughter broke her foot, uh, and I've spent the last three days in doctor's offices, and so I've been unable to prepare my presentation. But um, I'll put it on the calendar for as soon as I can. I'm, I'll have to look at where I'm at, and it'll likely be next week. But I think that's going to butt up against um, internship stuff or something. I got to look at the calendar. But yeah, as soon as possible. And again, I'm I apologize. Sorry to hear about your daughter, and no no apology necessary. You weren't on the you weren't on a, a specific deadline for that. Um, in fact, I think it's best that once you have some ideas put together, make sure that you get those circulated on the mail list, and then we'll be able to um, have you know, a, a more thoughtful discussion when we do get it on the agenda be next week or the week after. Yeah, that's or, really the piece that's missing, Dan. And thanks. Yeah, I was going to float it on the mailing list uh, last Friday, you know, and, and we can talk about it over the weekend in this week. But yeah, I'll do that as soon as I... Um, as I get it all together. Thanks. All right. Well, with that, uh, thank everybody for their time, and we will speak again probably next week. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.